excitement in this temple today. We acknowledge that God is great. God is great and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. You can look high, you can look low, but you'll never find another like our God. His greatness is unsearchable. His love is unsearchable. His peace is unsearchable. His right hand, his strong right hand is unsearchable. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I dare you right where you are to open up your mouth and declare, God is great and greatly to be praised. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God is great. In every situation, God is No matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like I dare you to declare your situation, God is Begin and look at that, turn around and say, God is great God is great, God is great, yes Yes, he is, no matter what it is He's good and he's awesome. He's mighty. God is great. God is great. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Look at somebody and say, God is. Hey, God is great. Ah, right, you joined us at the right time. Here, here from the house. Ah, right, you're in the house. The Potter's House Data International Ministries. Welcome. Welcome to our viewing audience. Welcome to those with us here in the sanctuary. Ah, today is a good day for you to connect with somebody's spirit and declare together that God is great and he is greatly to be praised. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Thou and host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desire of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me up upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me therefore after offer I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yea I will sing praises to the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I will sing praises to the Lord even right where you are you can open up your mouth and just begin to sing praises to the Lord hallelujah Oh, I dare somebody just to open up your mouth even right now and just offer up a God of praise from your bottom of your heart. Offer up a praise to him. Offer up a praise to him. Let him hear your voice this morning. Let him hear how grateful you are. Let him hear how thankful you are. God is great. God, you are great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you are great, and you're greatly to be praised. Ah, Father, we bless you. We honor you. Oh, great God. Oh, wonderful God. Oh, awesome God. Oh, sovereign God, you are great and greatly to be praised. Oh, God, we praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify you. We lift you on high, God. And God, even right now, we just want to repent. We say we're sorry for anything that we have said and done that was not pleasing to you, oh God. Oh God, we say we are free. 
We are free indeed. There is no guilt. There is no shame. We're free to worship you. Free to praise you, oh God. Now, God, here we are, oh God, gathered together, ready to bless you, ready to celebrate you, ready to magnify you, ready to glorify you, God. Our hearts and our minds are turned towards you, God, because we are thankful and we are grateful, even right now, God. Yes, oh God, we're reminded of the great things you have done for us. God, you didn't have to do it, but you did it anyway. You are great and great greatly to be praised. God, we have gathered together to testify of the marvelous and wonderful things you have done. And to testify it has been good, it's marvelous in our eyes. And God, you are great and greatly to be praised. God, thank you even right now that you're turning something around. That there is a turnaround, God. That there is victory, oh God. That there is peace, oh God. That you shall do it tonight, God. Today, God. God, in the sanctuary, have your way, oh God. Here we are, ready for to be used by you, oh God. So God, download it to us, oh God, what you would have us to do. Cause our praise not to be ordinary, but God, cause your super to meet our natural and your extra to meet our ordinary, that we may praise and worship you like never before. Cause us to open up our alabaster box of worship, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you. We honor you. And it's in Jesus' name. Every heart said amen. Somebody offer God a shout of praise. Come on, offer God a shout of praise.
Come on, come on, come on. Put your hands together, come on. Yeah. When you clap your hands, you can cancel the enemy's plan. Come on. Now he got a plan. <laughs> Don't let him steal your praise. Don't let him steal your praise. Come on. Ah. Uh.
to be praised. You are God worthy to be praised. You are in the good time, worthy, bad time, worthy, sad time, worthy. condition is in you're worthy to be praised no matter what the doctor said you're still worthy to be praised oh in death you're still worthy to be praised when I don't know God, you're still worthy. When it seems there's no way that can be made, you're worthy. Because you already made a way of escape for me, you're worthy. Already made a way of escape for me, you're worthy. You already had a plan for me, you're worthy. You know my beginning from my end, you're worthy. Because he's worthy. God is worthy. I'm trying to let this go. Huh? Oh, he's worthy. Somebody forgot to praise him. Come on. Somebody forgot to give it to him. He's worthy. Lift your hand. He's worthy. Open your mouth. He's worthy. Raise your hand. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Look beyond the hill. He's worthy. 
Where your help comes from is worthy. God is worthy, yeah. Everybody can say that you worthy to be praised. Say it till you mean it. <laughs> say it until you feel it. Huh? He's a worthy to. He's shelter. He's a worthy. He'll feed you. He's a worthy. He'll clothe you. He's a worthy. He'll make a way. He's a worthy. He'll bring that child back home. He's worthy. He'll deliver from drugs. He's worthy. From alcohol. He's worthy. From depression. He's worthy. I'm from feeling like you all alone. He's worthy. To be placed. Oh. In grief. He's worthy. Oh, praise the worthy God. Praise the worthy God. Praise the worthy God. Praise the worthy God. Oh, oh, oh he's worthy.
somebody and just minister to them and say he's all you need uh, some of y'all ain't looking at somebody you need to encourage somebody somebody needs you just to look at him and say God is all you need uh, <laughs> now can you just lift your hands and say God you're all I need yeah I don't need nothing else as long as I got God as long as I have God, that's more than enough. If I lose everything, as long as I have God, that's enough to start all over again. If I lose everything and still have God, that's enough to start over again. I'm trying to help somebody. And it looks like you've lost everything, but you still have God. That's enough to start over again. Woo! Come on, just tell him. Tell him you are all. Just stand up and testify to God and let him know that you are all with your hands lifted and you can help us sing this song and just say you, you are, oh, <laughs> I dare you to think about that time you didn't know where it was coming from, you didn't see a way out. But let's stand together and say, you, you are, yeah. are, Come on, now lift your voice and say, you, you Question. I just wonder, what would you do if he walked into the room? What would you do if he 
walked into the room. Him was not anything made that was made. He's the sufficient one, my creator. Everybody, oh, sufficient. Got those hands, come on, hallelujah! Hallelujah! In you, 
God, we pray for the boldness to speak of your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your salvation. We speak boldness to witness to someone who doesn't know you. So God, in this service, thank you for coming to minister to us. Now, God, we pray for your servant, our pastor, Pastor Ken Moss and the first family, God. We pray for them even right now, God. God, we pray for the word that will come forth from your servant that you have downloaded into him. God calls us to see none of him but all of you. Hide him behind the cross that we may see you even more through your word. Thank you, oh God. God, we speak nothing missing in his life, nothing to lack in his life that you're providing everything for. Thank you. Then God calls the oil to flow from the head down that we may see nothing's missing, nothing's lacking, that everything is provided. Thank you. God, minister to us even throughout this day. In the name of Jesus, open up our hearts and our eyes that we may receive and see you in the blessed name of Jesus. And every heart said amen.
wondering, okay, what did he mean? Let me let me help you a little bit. Well, you walked in here this morning. Grace and mercy towards you. You rose up from last night. God's grace and mercy and his love towards you. His kindness, amen, allowed you, amen, to come in and to walk into this sanctuary and lift up holy hands. His grace and mercy was towards you this morning. Hallelujah, I want you to know this morning, my friend, not what would you do if he walked in the house, but what will you do because he's here among you right now. Somebody ought to stand in your feet and give God a great praise. Hallelujah, his grace. some things and he was at the end of his rope. 
And he, he, yeah. he wanted to die. And so he called his sister, glory to God. His sister who's filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He called his sister who he no believed in an almighty God. And he asked her a question. And the question that he asked, she said, no, I can't do that. But what I can do, amen, we're going to lift you up in prayer. We're going to believe God for your life. And that young man called me on yesterday afternoon. And that young man said, Ellen, when just what you said this morning, I asked him, I said, sir, what would you do if you could say something to God? What would you say to him? And he began to lay out a laundry list. Well. of things that he would ask God to do. The first thing he said, Pastor, I just asked God to help me, deliver me from my anger. Oh, yeah. I asked God to help me to make better choices with the people in my life. He began to pray, but I said, sir, let me ask you a question. After he laid out his list, I'm listening, I'm just praising God. I said, sir, have you, have you ever accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? He said, no, sir. He said, no. I don't think so. I said, would you mind, sir, if I lead you in the prayer of repentance? Well, if I offer Christ to you, would you receive Jesus in your heart? He said, yes, sir. And we led him in prayer. And don't you know, my friends, this brother who was looking at death on yesterday, the next morning, amen, he was giving his life to God. He was giving God praise. He was honoring the Lord. And I'm here to tell you, my friend, Towards you. Yes, it is. Towards me. His love and kindness. Towards me. It's towards you. It's towards me. Yeah. It's towards me. No matter your load, no matter the weight, no matter how heavy it is, no matter what you got to bear, no matter if you're facing death, amen. God's faithfulness and his love. You can say it is towards me. A young man received Christ as his Lord and Savior. Towards me, yes. And after we got through talking for over a little hour, amen, he was blessing the name of the Lord. And he was giving God praise for his sister. He was giving God praise for his family. He was giving God praise for life. He was giving God praise for Jesus the Christ. My friends, I hear God saying this morning, that you shall live and not die. Because he's faithful. He's righteous. He's good. He's very great. And his love and mercy is forever towards you. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what's going on in your life right now. God will look beyond your faults and see your very need. His name is Jesus. And you can give, you can cast all your burdens on the Lord. And know that he will carry you. He'll carry you through the storms. He'll carry you through the hardships. He'll carry you through the pain and the hurts and the sorrow and the doubts and the failure. He, he told me, he said, he said, Pastor, he said, Pastor, I, I, I'm having a hard time dealing with my failures. Now, how many of you know this morning that Christ died on Calvary's cross for our failures? I told the young brother I'm going to tell you this morning that failure in your life is never final in Jesus Christ and because he lives we can face tomorrow trust God this morning depend on him have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, have faith. 
in God. He's towards you. He loves you. He wants you. He died for you. He rose again for you. Have faith in God. Come on, put your hands together. Now give God a real praise because He is here. Hallelujah. His grace and mercy, as Minister Pam so eloquently saw, is towards me. Tell yourself that this morning. His grace and mercy is towards me. Me. With all my hangups, towards me. With all my mess ups, towards me. With all my attitude. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to lift up holy hands. It's hard to open our mouth and give Him praise when, we, when we're dealing with what we're dealing with. But if you can, if you can take the, uh, take the, take the, if you can take the words of Paul and when he said, "Just press through, press your way through, yeah, through the mark of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus." Come on, press your way through. If you can just press your way through and find down in your belly, down in your knower, just find, amen, something to praise God for. He'll lift your burdens. He'll calm the storms in your life. His grace Hallelujah. and His mercy Lord, yeah. is towards me. Towards this me. Put your hand on your heart towards me. Me, yeah. It's sad like you mean it towards me, cause it's yeah. real, it's true. Towards me. Hallelujah. Towards me. God loves you. God loves you, and He wants the best for your life. Yes. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord this morning. Allow the words of God in this song and the praise and worship that we've had this morning to comfort your heart. And whatever you do, always remember that his grace and mercy is always towards me. Put yourself and make it personal. Make it personal. You might not feel it. You might not even be able to see it. Come on, Holy Ghost. But his mercy and his grace is towards me. We love you. We thank God for you. Let's get ready for the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. One more time. Put your hands together and bless our Lord God in Jesus' mighty name. have no hope. The weight of the world, I thought, was on my shoulder. I was locked up, tied up, tangled up, encapsulated in sin. Somebody 
nobody told me about the loving grace of Jesus the Christ. Somebody told me that in spite of all my failures, I could be saved, washed in the blood, forgiven. My sins are cast into the sea of forgiveness. And I took a step of faith with little I had. And I believe, amen, what they told me about the word of God was true. My friends, God is a changing force in our life. He heals, delivers, and sets free. He heals, delivers, and sets free. He makes crooked ways straight again. He takes a hardened heart and makes it soft unto the Lord. He saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. He saves no matter who you are, where you are, where you come from, where you're going, God is able to save you if we trust in the Word of the living God. Hear the word of the Lord today. Allow the songs of Zion to resonate in your spirit. Allow the prayers that's been rendered up in this house to saturate your mind. Free your heart to honor and to worship God by way of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray to be able to stand in your presence, to come into your presence. To worship you. To hear your holy word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. A light to our plan. And we do believe, Lord God, that when you speak through the pages of your holy word, that you're speaking directly to us. We believe, Father, that you love us just like your word declares you do. Father, I pray that I don't stand in your way of what the Holy Spirit intends to do in this place. Let our hearing be clear. Let our perceiving be without intrusion. Enable us, Lord God, not faint and grow weary but to know that indeed your grace and mercy is forever towards me we honor you today we bless you Lord God and we lift you up and we magnify your name speak Lord Jesus your servants are listening. Have your way continually in this service and every day of our life. In Jesus' name, the people of God said we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. One more time, will you put your hands together and just magnify the name of our Lord. So good to be in the house of God this morning. So oh, good to be in the house of God this morning. God bless you, Mr. Pam. Thank you, Elder Craig.
praise team. We thank God for that hour of worship. What a blessed time we had in it. We give God praise for covering our lineage. Mm -hmm. Bishop, Dr. Bishop Mark C. McGuire Sr., Lady Angela. We thank God for them. Thank God for Bishop Bob McLaughlin, our grandparents in the ministry, and Lady Narlene. Mm -hmm. Thank God for Lady Moss, first lady of the house. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. Thank God for all of our ministerial staff, our secular administration, sacred dancers. What a great job they did this morning. We thank God for them. Thank God for our deacon body and all of those. Thank God for you for having a heart of worship and praise this morning. To be able to come out and to worship and to honor the Lord and to fellowship one with another. We bless God for each and every one. Let us jump right into the word of God this morning. We had down there that we were going to do our biblical declaration. But, uh, give me, amen, we're going to come back to that at a later date. I have not forgot about it because I want to get back to doing our biblical declaration. Because the word of God is our guide. Is that right? The Bible is our guide. But for a little while, if you will, turn with me to Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 12. Those that are able to stand, we want to ask that you please stand with us at the reading of God's word. I love you, Pastor. Love you too, sir. And God loves you more. Thank God. Follow Matthew 7, 7 through 12. And the word of God reads as follows. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Or what man is there among you who, if he, his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Mm -hmm. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, mm -hmm. do also to them. For well, this is the law and the prophet. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his most holy and righteous word. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wave at your neighbor as you take your seats. And let them know you're glad to see them in the house of God. We also welcome those that are watching us over Facebook Live and over the airways. We thank God for you for joining us on this morning. We pray, amen, that the Spirit of God is moving heavily in your house as he is in this house. Amen. We give God praise and glory for your life. In Jesus' name. Just for a little while, I want to talk to you on this subject. Uh, Faith that exemplifies kingdom character. Faith that exemplifies kingdom character. For the last few weeks, the Spirit of the Lord has been pressing upon me to talk about faith. Last Sunday, we talked about faith, about standing firm in your faith. This week, we want to talk about faith again that exemplifies kingdom character. And so when we think about, amen, all the songs and the praise and worship that has gone up in this place this morning, amen, exemplify kingdom character. What does it mean to exemplify? Uh, it means, amen, to, uh, to be a typical, if you will, example 
of something or someone. It means to serve as a typical example of representing or representing Jesus the Christ. Our bishop would say we represent Christ to some folk and we represent Christ for others. It symbolizes, exemplify means to symbolize or to personify, to embody, or it means to be the embodiment of God's love, to demonstrate Christ's character, to show his love, his strength, his peace, his care, his comfort, to demonstrate the mind of Christ. Paul said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We want to demonstrate the mind of Christ, which simply means, my friend, we want to be Christ-like. This is how we do it. Throughout the Sermon on the Mount, Christ has been teaching about the character of those in his kingdom. He began with the Beatitudes, which gives us eight characteristics that will be in the life of someone who is truly born again. Someone who's looking to exemplify a kingdom character. As the Lord gave me the privilege and the honor of being able to share the salvation prayer with this young man, this brother who loves God and who just going through some hard times right now. Many of you can identify. Let me say this. Many of us can identify. Come on, Holy Ghost. Because truth be told, we're all going through something. But here the text, we understand that as we exemplify the kingdom character, we have these eight characteristics laid out in the Beatitudes, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 10. The word of God says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Eight characteristics of the men and women of God who are always looking to exemplify kingdom character. Christ contrasted this false righteousness of the Pharisees with the righteousness of those in the kingdom. When he laid out in 520 of Matthew, verse 20, this is what he said to them, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Why, why, why would he say that to the disciple? The Pharisees had a way of lessening God's commands so they could fulfill them. They taught that if one had not committed murder, he had fulfilled God's commands. But Christ taught that being angry with someone was to receive the same judgment as murder. See the, the difference? They taught that if a person didn't commit adultery, that
that he had kept the law. But Jesus taught if one had lusted in his heart, he has committed adultery already in his heart. The Pharisees practiced an outward righteousness alone, but God requires both outward and inward purity from the children of God. Matthew 6, Christ described how the Pharisees made a show of their religion. The Bible says that they fasted and prayed and gave to be seen by others. They did this rather than to honor God. You know, we got folk among us sometimes, amen, perhaps one of us, if not all of us, have been in that place at one time or another, or we know somebody. We do things, amen, just so we can look like, amen, we holy. Come on, Holy Ghost. We, we, we give things, amen, so somebody can pat us on the back and say, oh, look at what Pastor Moss just did. And how many of you know, amen, as we sing around here all the time, it's not about me, but it's what? About him, Jesus the Christ. The Pharisees had a way of doing things to get attention to themselves opposed to giving God the honor. Christ told the disciples, well, first of all, let me go back, because Christ taught that the kingdom and the children of the kingdom must practice, watch this, secrecy. In other words, we don't do things, amen, to get glory to ourselves. If God has you bless somebody, if God has you to, 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 to do something for somebody, to bring a gift to somebody, or if God tells you, amen, to go and take care of somebody, amen, God is doing that, amen, that he might get the glory. It's not about, you know, somebody said, you know, it's, it's not about me. It's not about us. It's not about, amen, I took some groceries over to the house yesterday. Amen, hallelujah, and they was happy about it and all that. You just got your reward right there. Come on, Holy Ghost. We, we do the things that we do that we might honor and glorify God. That God will get the glory. And so Christ taught that we ought to do things, we need to begin to practice in secrecy, seeking to be rewarded by God instead of men. Matthew 7, 1 through 6, Christ told the disciples, he said, help others. Help them take the specks out of their own eyes, referring to our personal sin." He was telling them by getting rid of their own sin first and discerning the receptiveness of those that they ministered to. He said, look, when we, when we go to, to witness, when we go to, be, uh, to tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ, we ought to first make sure, amen, that we've taken the speck out of our own eye. Matter of fact, we ought to take the log, come on, Holy Ghost, out of our own eye. If you got a log in your eye, it's really kind of hard to see a speck in somebody else's eye. Hey amen. I mean, you know, if you got a big log in your eye, amen, this thing was in my eye, it'll be real hard for me, amen, to have this log in my eye and find a little speck in your eye. Come on, Holy Ghost. But Jesus is, is, is reminding them, and he's reminding us, that if anyone who has truly considered the standards of God's kingdom, that we ought to become crushed by them to the point that we're not judgmental, to the point that we're not a, 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 a lassi, lashing out on folk, amen, just, uh, just, just to have, uh, you know, some folk, we, 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 we talk about other folk to keep the focus off ourselves. Come on, Holy Ghost. The Pharisees had a way, amen, of pointing out the sins of everybody else, amen, to keep folk from looking at how fair they were. And how ungodly they were. How can we love and bless those who hate us? Glad you asked the question. Matthew 5 and 44 says it to us like this. But I say to you, 
Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Talked to a young man as I was telling you. He just blessed my soul. And I was thinking about how Judas betrayed Jesus. And I shared with him, because he, he shared with me that he loved this person, this person that he loved. He, 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 he really thought this person was his best friend. And the person did him wrong. And he was having a hard time dealing with that. And so I shared with him about the betrayal of Jesus and how Jesus was betrayed and how Jesus is betrayed every day when we go against his word. How we betray God when God tells us to do something and we do our own thing. How we betray God, amen, when he tells us, amen, to pray for folk and we say, no, I don't like them, I ain't praying for them. We are betraying the Holy Ghost. We are betraying our God, amen, because he has entrusted us with the care of other people. And we don't have a choice or we don't have a right to say who we're not going to pray for or who we're not going to bless because for whatever reason, amen, we don't like them or care for them. We're called to do what God has called us to do. And so here Jesus, through Matthew's chapter 7, we see what Jesus is discussing how difficult it is to get into God's kingdom. He reminds them that it is a narrow road. One of, the, one of the things I found out about prison is that when you go into prison, the gate is wide. Uh, uh, matter of fact, matter of fact, wait, when you go into prison, they bring you through the back gate. Come on, let go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They bring you through the back gate of the prison, and I mean to tell you, you can get about three or four busloads in this thing. That's how wide the gate is. Yes, sir. And when, but, 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 when, but when you leave the prison, when you get parole, when you get released, they send you through this one narrow door. Glory to God. Yes, Only one person can walk out at a time. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yes, and so Jesus is describing to the disciples, amen, that sometimes we have a prison mentality. And sometimes because of this prison mentality, amen, the kingdom of God is just like that. It is a narrow road. And on this narrow road, he says, you must be reminded that there are false prophets along the way. There are many prone to self-deception about their faith. He goes on to tell them, amen, you need to be careful, amen, because on this narrow road, hallelujah, if you're not mind, if your mind is not stayed on the Lord, if your focus is not God, amen, you will easily be deceived. He reminds them in Matthew 7 through 12 how we must learn to grow in kingdom character. What principles are there for God to teach us in this text? And why is it so important for us to grow in the character of God? The first thing, my friends, that we must do if we're going to walk, if we're going to grow and mature, if we're going to have the faith that it takes, amen, to walk in, to live in kingdom character, we must pray for it. Matthew 7, 7 to 8 says this, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. The problem is, my friend, keep that up there for a minute. The problem is, my friend, we ask, we seek, and we knock, amen, and then we expect it to happen immediately. 
We, 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 want, we want instant. We want it to be instant. We want, we, we, we want that microwave faith. Come on, Holy Ghost. And sometimes God is saying to you, amen, that when I say knock, when I say ask, you will receive. When I say seek, you will find. When I say knock, the door will be open to you, amen. We must understand that it's at his timing. It's at his timing that the giving is going to be, we're going to receive what we ask. It's at his timing that when we seek, we'll find. It's at his timing that when we're not, the door will be open. It's not based on when we want it. It's based on when he thinks we can handle it. Come on, Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, my friend, but I'm glad that there's been some things, amen, that I've asked God for, and he didn't give it to me. And when I look back over my life, I said, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you that you didn't give me what I was asking for right there. Amen. God wants us to know that everyone who asks will receive and the one who seeks will find and the one who knocks the door will be open. But it's only according to his will for your life. What exactly should we as children of God be asking for? What should we be seeking from the Lord? What are you knocking on heaven's door for? Christ was trying to teach the people of God that believers must ask, believers must seek, and believers must knock. And we do it because we're looking to receive from the Lord. But the very fact that he's asking us to seek, I mean to ask, to seek, and to knock, what he's telling us, my friend, is that we must pray. It's a prayer unto God. It's absolutely call. It's a call to prayer. Let me ask you a question, my friend. When was the last time you prayed for your brother and your sister? When was the last time you prayed for your spouse? When's the last time you prayed for that one that got on your last nerve? God is saying that we must consistently and constantly give ourselves to prayer. Paul taught us in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, he said, pray without ceasing. We're living in hard times right now. We're going through all kind of things. The weight of the world is on folks' shoulders. People are dealing with all kind of chaos in the world. Folk are looking for answers. Folk are tired. Folk are hurting. Folk don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Folks are losing their jobs by the millions. Amen. Folk want to know, amen, what is my next step? How do I trust God when I can't see him? How do I trust God when I can't feel him? Paul said, pray without ceasing. Prayer has a way, and we've heard it before, of changing things. When we think about the scriptures and we think about the gospel story, Jesus always pray he always found himself arising early in the morning to pray unto the father Paul like Jesus noted that Christ is not telling us here what to ask for he's not telling us what to seek and he's not telling us what to knock for and because of this, some folks, some Christians, some believers consider this prayer to be a blank check. Come on, Holy Ghost. They, they consider this to be a blank check that says we can ask God for anything we want and God going to do it. Somebody say, no, nah, that ain't it. Wrong, that's not it. We can't ask God for anything and God just going to do it. Folk believe that we can ask for anything if we have faith and that we'll receive it. 
But this does not recognize the context. This is not saying that in Matthew 7, 7 through 8. This is given in the context, my friend, of the Sermon on the Mount. When you get a chance, go back and read it. Where Christ teaches about the great righteousness of the kingdom of God. God never promised us that we will be wealthy, healthy, and free from problems or difficulties. If we pray for those things, my friend, we have no scriptural assurance that God will answer our request. God never said that you was going to be healthy all your life. He wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be free, and he wants us to be uh, free of sickness and death. But let me tell you, how many of you know there's a whole lot of Christians walking around with health issues? And it ain't because they sin it. Come on, Holy Ghost. That too is a lie. I was telling my sister, we were talking the other day, and one of the things I said, you know, uh, 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 unfortunately, we all have a cross to bear. And I don't know what your cross is. You might not know what my cross is, but we got one. Yours might be illness. Yours might be sickness. And we pray and we ask God to heal us. We ask God to deliver us. We ask God. I remember my wife. My wife had multiple sclerosis, my first wife. And I prayed, oh, I prayed so hard. I said, God, please, if you just get her through this one, I promise. If you get her through this one, I promise I'll serve you all the days of my life. How many of you know my wife died of multiple sclerosis? My second wife, Deidre, amen. I pray, Lord God, amen. I pray, Lord God, please heal her, Lord God, that we, we were married and a month later she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And I said, God, please, if you will, please, God, amen, I know, I know, I know you can do it. I know you're able. And I quoted the scripture, and I believe God, hallelujah, and my wife died two and a half years later of breast cancer that metastasized to her brain. And she loved God, and she praised him, and she gave him the glory. And I had no understanding. I was like, Lord, what in the world is going on? I had a young lady tell me one day, and some of you have heard my testimony. A young lady told me after hearing my testimony, she came up to me after service. She said, Brother Moss, God must really love you. And by this time, my friend, uh, you got to know, after losing two of my wives to sickness, illness, I was in a lot of pain, even though I, I didn't always show it. And she said, God must really love you. And I said, well, why do you say that, sis? She said, because God allowed you to be the one that he shared in their last days of their life. Out of all the people in the world, God chose you to be there with them when they took their last breath. She said, what a mighty God we serve. And don't you know, my friends, I hadn't looked at it like that because all I heard was folk telling me, man, God must not like you. Well, you, you, got, you, you got it hard with women, don't you? You just got it. I mean, folk, negative folk, Christian folk. And I'm here to tell you, my friend, that God loves you so much, amen, that he will allow you to deal with what you're dealing with and help bring you through it, amen. Hallelujah. What did he tell Paul? Paul said, God, if you take this thing, take this storm from me, hallelujah. And God said, my grace is sufficient. Sometimes, family, we got to bear our cross. I can't explain it. I wish I could, but I can't. All I know is he's faithful. All I know is he's worthy. All I know, we can trust him. All I know, amen, that he'll carry you through, amen, you and your burdens. Christ helped us understand that all we need to do is pray for God's will to be done in our life. If we pray God's will, which includes us developing Christ-like righteous character, God will positively answer your prayer. We want God's will to be done. And sometimes, family, we pray and we ask God for our will. And we understand we want folk to be here with us. We want loved ones to hang around. We want, we want what we want. 
But we must ask, my friend, is it God's will? God is trying to build kingdom character in us. And the way we get kingdom character is we got to do like Christ did. Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Can you say it? 1 John 5 and 14. And this is the confidence that we have before him. That whenever we ask anything according to what? His will, he hears us. When we pray God's will, family, we can be sure that he will answer that prayer. Therefore, in order to pray effectively, we must give ourselves to studying God's word. We talked about being able to pray. We're talking about now we got to study the word of God. We got to know the word of God. We got to be able to interpret the word of God. We got to be effective in studying and discerning God's will. God's will, when properly interpreted, is meant to be pursued in prayer. That's why we pray. We're praying for God's will to be done in our hearts, in our lives, and in our future. So Christ's promise of receiving when we ask, seek, and knock is true only when we are pursuing the will of the king. That's important, my friends. Some of you, many of you may be asking, you may know somebody who's been asking the question, how come God won't answer my prayer? Well, when you see him again, ask him, are you praying it according to God's will for your life? You praying it, asking according to the word of God for your life? When we're pursuing the will of Jesus, God promises us to answer those prayers. He says in Matthew 5, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. If we truly hunger to get rid of sin in our lives, if we truly hunger to be used to preach the gospel of Christ, if we truly hunger to have his peace, his patience, his love, and his joy in our lives, my friends, God will give them to us. But he commands that we pray for them. We got to pray for people. We got to pray that the joy of the Lord be our strength. We got to pray, amen, for patience. I heard somebody say, you better not ask for patience because you're probably ready to go through some things. But the Bible says if you want patience, you got to pray for it. And be, re and be receptive. Whatever he brings to you to bring about that patience, you got to be willing to go through it. We ask for patience, but we don't want to go through it. Now, God, I asked for patience. I didn't say I want, I want to go through all this. Come on, Holy Ghost. But we can't tell God what we want and then tell him how to give it to us. We got to trust him that he knows what's best for us. Hallelujah. He commands that we pray for these things that we want in our life. We can discern Christ is calling men and women to the Lord to seek the righteousness of the kingdom of God. Not just by the context of this scripture, but also as we consider Luke 11, 9 through 13, where it says, So I tell you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receive. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you, if your sons ask for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, although you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? When Luke, Dr. Luke, shares Christ's promises of the Holy Spirit, 
or asking and seeking and knocking. In the original language, there is no article before Holy Spirit. In other words, when, the, when this happens, uh, commentators and, and those are historians believe that this refers to the ministries of the Holy Spirit instead of the person of the Holy Spirit. And so we do not want uh, 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 do, so, so the question, let me ask you this question. Do we want the Spirit's peace? Do you want the Holy Spirit's peace? If the answer is yes, then we ought to be praying that God fill us with, this, with the peace of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will teach us and lead us and guide us into all truth. If we want God's wisdom, we must ask for God's wisdom. If we want divine love in the things of God, hallelujah, then we must ask for God's love. Matter of fact, we ought to cry for it. How many of us, you ain't got to raise your hand, but just ask, ask yourself this question. How many of us are crying out daily for God's righteousness? How many of us are crying? I mean, when I look at my life, I say, God, please give me, look, please clean me up. I want the righteousness of God. Not so that man can say how holy I am. I want the righteousness of God because I want to make it in. I want to be with Jesus. Glory to God. We ought to cry out for the righteousness of God. We need divine love in order to love the unlovable. And just so you know, in case you didn't know, we all at one time was the unlovable. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we were all one at one time, uh, uh, amen, the unlovable. But because of his great love, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us. He made us lovable because of his precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. James 4 and 2 says, if we're looking for wisdom and all these things, James said, we have not because we ask not. There was a young man by the name of James Boyce. He said that our our lack of prayer for righteousness explains a great deal of the weakness and powerlessness of the church. He went on to say that every now and then that we may be asked by some folk, Christian or non-Christian alike, why is it that I cannot seem to find victory in my walk with Christ? Why does the Bible seem so difficult to understand? Why do I still seem to be in bondage and some sins are still besetting me? Why am I such a poor witness? Why do the high principles of Christ's conduct have such little effect at my job? and in the affairs of my family. He went on to say that the answer to all these questions, my friends, is that you do not ask God for these blessings. We have not because we ask not. And then one text says we, ask, we have not because why? We ask amiss. We're asking for the wrong reason with the wrong motive, with the wrong agenda. Why is it that many people are asking, why do I not have the power of God in my everyday living? Why is the Bible to be so dead to me? I don't understand it. I can't comprehend what God is saying. 
Why are there so few people being converted in our community? Why are so many leaders not being used to expand and reinforce the ministry of God? Again, my friends, the answer is simply because we're not praying enough. Why is there so much poverty in the world? Why is there so much racial and social injustice in the world? I submit to you, family of God, and probably perhaps more so than not, it's because the church of God is not praying like we ought to. We're praying amiss. This is not a condemnation on those that are praying, but it ought to be an eye-opener for us, amen, for those that are not praying enough. We ought to pray without ceasing. The devil has no authority over our lives. The only authority he has is what we give him when we fail to pray. Why are there not many folk running to the altar saying, I want to be saved and I want to be born again? Why is the church coming off to be so weak why is the preaching seemingly so poor why is our impact upon our society and upon our family and our community so ineffective why are our goals not so easily realized again God answers that you are neglecting your prayer life. We do not have because we're not asking the right questions. Let me ask you a question, my friend. What are you asking God for? Why do we so easily, and this, is, this, this, this may not be for you, but if it is, receive it and respond immediately. Why do believers commonly neglect to pray for righteousness? What, what, what is it that you believe God is asking you to pray for righteousness for. Why is he causing you to currently seek him in prayer for righteousness and for joy and for peace and for wisdom and understanding? Scripture teaches us about our need for faith. Faith is the doorway to us receiving God's good gifts including salvation. Consider, my friends, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, and consider Hebrews 11 and 6, where the Word of God tells us, amen, that without faith it is impossible to please Him. For the one who approaches God must believe that He exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. James 1, 5 and 8 says it this way. But if anyone is deficient in wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without reprimand, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without doubting. For those who doubt is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed around by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, since he is a double-minded person, unstable in all his ways. Matthew 7 and 20. He told them, it was because 
of your little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. My friends, in order to receive God's promises, including the promises of righteousness, we must pray in total confidence of God's character. If scripture clearly promises us something, we must believe that those promises as we pray. Otherwise, God will not do it. We've got to believe the word of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So it is for this reason, my friends, that Satan comes to attack the character of God in your life, in my life. He came with Eve in the garden. Satan wanted, wanted her to think that God was not good and that God didn't have good plans for her life. God was withholding his best from her. When she believed that lie, she sinned against God and missed his best. Doubting God and his plan for us will not only lead us into sin, my friends, but it will rob us of many of God's blessings. Many can't receive wisdom, the fruits of the Spirit, or the freedom from some habitual sin because of a flawed view about God. What has happened in your life that has caused you to have a flawed view about God? What has happened in your life? What are you dealing with right now that's causing you to doubt God's goodness and therefore lack of faith in him? How can we grow in faith, my friends, so that we can receive God's promises and therefore grow in the kingdom of Christ's character? I'm going to give you three things, and I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sit down and take my Number one, faith is increased as we ask God for it. Number two, faith is increased as we live in God's word. And number three, faith is increased as we walk with those who are strong in faith. The one who associates with the wise grows wise, says the Lord, but a companion of fools suffers harm, Proverbs 13 and 20. When wisdom and scripture refers to knowing and obeying God, according to Proverbs 9 and 10, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When closing, my friends, when we walk with others who are serious about their faith and living it out in Christ, our faith too is increased. However, when we find ourselves around those who are not serious about God, or even disobedient to his will, it will weaken our faith and our reception of God's gifts. My last question for you this morning, my friends, who are you walking with? And how are they impacting your life? Bishop said some time ago, we ought to celebrate the sage that we imitate. We're going to walk in God's kingdom, character, character of Christ. We must imitate 
God's loving nature. We're going to walk in kingdom character. We must imitate God's loving nature. Matthew 7 and 12 sums it up like this. In everything, treat others as you would want them to treat you. For this fulfills the law and the prophets. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and yet the doing of his most holy word. We thank God for you today, and we thank God for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The elders are going to come. I'm going to share with you for those who may not know the Lord. We never want to close a service without giving the opportunity for someone to be saved, to receive salvation. Faith that exemplifies kingdom. We want to be like Christ. More like him we want to be. My friends, continue to pray. Continue to believe. Continue to trust. Continue to wait on the Lord. change will come. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. One more time. Put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're building character today. Come on, praise is one of the ways we build character. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stop praising him. Come on. Celebrate him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did it for you and for me. Amen. He keep, he's keeping you and me in spite of what we might be going through or what we've been through. He's a God that can keep you. And I'm so glad about that. This is an opportunity where there might be someone here that heard this word and you want to give your life to Christ or you want to be a part of this fellowship. If that's you, we offer Christ to you at this moment. Amen. We don't want to leave. We want to make sure everyone is covered by the blood of Jesus and that's in the ark of safety. If you're here today and you want to give your life to Christ, raise your hand. We want to take this opportunity right now. If you're here and you want to make the Potter's House Date International Ministries your church home, raise your hand. Amen. I like everybody here is family. Amen. Come on, celebrate Jesus right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, it's time to give. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all was weak. I said it's time to give. Hallelujah. Yeah, you act like he's blessed you this week. Act like he's given you something this week to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. So if that's you today, wherever you are in the sanctuary, everyone stand as we prepare to bring our gifts and our offerings. Everyone stand, please, 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 and please. After I pray for the gifts, I will give the benediction as well. We ask that you would follow the directions of our greeters as they will um, show you and direct you the way to go. 
Hallelujah. Father God, we love you. We magnify you. We bless you for the gift and the giver on today. Lord, allow us to be good stewards of what you've blessed us with and to bring it back to you in Jesus' name. Now, be with us. Keep us, God. Allow this word to bless us as we leave this place, but never from your care. Allow your love to flow through us, oh God, so that someone might see you in us. We thank you for this opportunity and this experience that we have felt on today. Bless our pastor, God. Replenish him a hundredfold today, God. Give him back everything that he poured out. Allow him to know, Lord, that he did it for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, celebrate Jesus right there. Amen. We're going to start with those on my right. I see big sister Samika is back there. On my right, your left. Hallelujah. Come expeditiously, please. Come on, come on. Don't wait on nobody. Come on. Hallelujah.